Hey drafters, I wanted to just show you this, which is the Bamboo Lab mouse kit. Sometimes you get it with printers themselves or special offers, or you can actually purchase this individually for about 20 Australian dollars. And it's actually a pretty decent little wireless mouse. The whole point of this is that you purchase the kit. It comes with the electronics that you see here and then you 3D print the other components. There's a whole range of variations of this now, so you can pick a mouse that is to your style, and you can also print it in the colors that you prefer as well. So I'm going for a black and orange in this case. Typically, this is the base component, which all the electronics will go into, and then the shell is where you'll see the variations. So I believe this one is the Ergo Snake. I'll leave a link in the description in case you wanna get this one yourself, but there's heaps of other ones available. So before we begin assembling this, let's just jump over to the computer. I'll show you where you can download these files and print them out, and then we'll get back into the assembly. If you follow the link in the description of the video, you'll come to this page, which is for the wireless mount kit. And this is a collection because it has a link to multiple of the most popular variations of it. So as you can see, this version of it is the default one, the one you see on the box. And when you order it, you'll get these components. So the PCB, the mouse wheel, the feet, the screws, etc. For some reason, mine was missing this little switch. Maybe I lost it, I'm not sure, but it still works without it anyway. But just make sure you check for that. It's 20 Australian dollars, so quite cheap for a little wireless mouse that performs quite well. And of course, sometimes you actually get it in the kits that come with the printer when you buy them. If you scroll down, you'll see some application instructions. So you might go on this yourself and just follow the instructions. And you can also go to the 3D model. So the 3D models are basically the shells in the internal component. In this table, you'll find links to some of the more popular ones. So the default wireless mouse one, and then there's some other crazy ones like the Batmobile and the Millennium Falcon. The one I am using in this video, I believe is the Ergo Mouse Snake Edition by George Rui. And if you click on that link, it will just take you to the Make a World link, which is here. And I'm sure you're familiar with this part by now, but you can simply select the profile you want and open in Bamboo Studio, which will take you to this section. So you should have your print already set up because you're downloading it from Make a World. And you can see there are two build plates for this version. There is the shell itself and then the components. I believe these components will just print without any supports. The shell does need some supports, but it's but it's been optimized for the correct angle. And when you slice plate, you'll see it has some tree supports. And I printed this out, didn't have any issues with it. Supports came off nice and cleanly. So just stick to the profile settings and you should be fine. So once you print the shell, you can then print the base components. And of course you can do this in any color you want or even any material type you want. Once you have that all printed, you're on to the next step. So let's head back over to the assembly board and I'll take you through the rest of the process. Okay, so now you should have all your parts printed out and you're ready to go. Here you'll see the parts that I've printed. You'll also see a bunch of the electronics that have come with the kit. And there are a couple of things that you might need which don't come with the kit. So you're going to need a single AA battery. Uh, you'll need a very, very small Allen key that fits the screws that come in the kit. And I also recommend just getting a lighter or little blowtorch like this because in my case, I get a bit of uh, stringy material in here from the print. So I'm just gonna burn those off really quick and I find these little blow torches are really good for that. So you can just go over really quickly and it will just clean up all those stringy bits. Just be careful with your fingers, of course. So highly recommend you get one of these if you're into your 3D printing. So the first thing we need to do is install the mouse wheel. So you'll see your little electronic board and you'll see a, the wheel has two points. So it's got a really sharp end and a bit of a fatter round end. So the sharp point will go into here. So you just want to carefully put that inside and just rotate it until you feel it sets in because it is actually um, a square fitting and then just push it in a little bit. You don't need to push it in all the way because you'll test it. If you drop it in here, you'll see you want it to be sitting just about in the middle. So if you push it in too far, it's gonna be pushing on that edge. So just don't go all the way. So that's the first step. Install the mouse wheel into the PCB. The next thing you wanna do is take this little laser screen, take your base component, 
And if you look at this carefully, you can see it's kind of got a fat end at the top and then it flattens down on this end. So the fat end will go towards the mouse wheel and it just drops in. It's got a flat side as well. So you don't want to be putting this side into it. You want this raised area to be sticking out as such. So as you can see there, the fatter end is at the top and it's sticking out like that. Now the second step will be to be putting a little switch in here, which will, I think, turns the mouse on and off because on the bottom of the PCB, you'll see a really tiny little switch just there. And that aligns with the bottom there. But unfortunately, in my case, I don't think that has come with my kit. So if that's the same for you, don't worry. You can just use a little tiny pin and just turn it on and off. Or maybe there's a 3D printed file available, but we're just gonna continue on without that part. The next step, we need to put our PCB board into our base component. On the PCB board, you'll see some little holes and these align with the pins that you'll find on here. So there's one there, there's one there, and there's one just in here. So what you wanna do is you drop that in and if you just carefully align those pins up, they should slot into those three holes. Now, I think my little one at the bottom here is broken, but that's fine. It's just to stop that from moving around. So again, make sure your mouse wheel is spinning freely. It's not rubbing on the edges of that and you can click it down and you should be good to continue. Our next step is to take our battery wire, just plug it into the board. And this can only go one way. Here you'll see kind of like a little tooth and a groove and that will just drop in. If it doesn't go in one way, just rotate it around, it'll fit in the other way. And we want our spring to be on the bottom side and our positive, the red one, to be on the top side. And these have some little tiny teeth that are formed into this metal. So they will push into the plastic and sort of hold into it. But be careful on pushing down on the top of the wire or bending it too much because they are just welded on and they're very fragile. So what you wanna do is kind of just line it up with that slot like that. And then without pushing directly on the wire or the top weld, kind of use your fingernails a little bit like that. Just give it a good push and it should kind of seat in there. And that's nice and secure now. That's not coming out because of those little teeth. And then I do the same with my positive. So I can just kind of gently bend that wire around to there so it's not going to get in the way. I can then put it in the slot and just using my fingernails, just drive that in. Seems this one's a little bit more difficult. So we'll just try and line that up a bit more. Okay, this one is just gripping in there. It's biting into the plastic and not really letting me push it in. So I'm gonna get a little tiny plier and just fix that up. What I'm gonna do is just squeeze these down a little bit and I'll do it on the other side too. Just trying to flatten those just slightly. So it should fit in a bit better this time. Cause I don't wanna flatten them completely because then they won't bite and it'll just pop out if I put a battery in. But yeah, that's, that's better. So now that has gone in and it won't pull out. So if you have a similar case, just do that with yours as well. Now what we wanna do is this red wire, we want to put into that groove such as like that. Okay, just give these a little check, make sure they're not falling out, make sure they're also flat, make sure the wheel's still good and it's not moving around. And we can move on to our next step, which is to put the top case on. And you'll see here, you got two holes at the top, one hole at the bottom, that is for three of these screws, which will align with those points. So you want to take the shell, keep your thumb on the board. So if you tip it upside down, it's not gonna fall out. And you wanna kind of line up that pin with this. It's gotta got a little seat for it there. And then these two should just line up naturally. So making sure these wires don't get pinched and break or anything. So you just want to, that wire should sort of come through the back there like that. So I've got my little wire coming through. You can kind of see where those two fronts should be lining up and then just squeeze down. Give it a good squeeze. And it should feel pretty snug and secure. The wires are all tucked in. They're not pinching on anything. The wire's not gonna get in the way there. So we can grab a couple of screws, screw those in. So we'll need three screws for that. Make sure you don't lose these because they are very, very tiny. I'm just going to pop one in and just start it off with my hands and then put the next one, just start that one off. And then I can take my really small Allen key, which I've got from some other 3D printer, I think. You might get one with Bamboo Lab printers that are, is small enough, I'm not sure. So just gently screw those screws in like such. 
Once you feel it go all the way, don't force it anymore. It is only very small screws and very small plastic. So it doesn't have a lot of material to support itself. So you don't want to over tighten it and break something. Okay, that is all nice and secure. Wheel still spinning, clicking, two buttons are clicking. My laser is in the correct spot and my little tiny switch. I'll just have to use something small like a pen so that I can turn that on, on and off. The next thing we need to do is we can take our bottom cover. So you'll see some little grooves in here. It actually goes in this way. So you'll see two grooves in there. So it should go in like that and snap down. You can just give that a test, make sure it's working and it should open up like that as well. Like that. And then we can put our shell on top. So with the shell, what you want to do first is put the front groove into the front like that. And then the back should just fall into place like that. And you'll have two screws on the back here. Maybe there's a, a extra screw you need to use for the main model. But in this case, it looks like we just need to use two for the base to secure it to the shell. So again, make sure you don't over tighten. Once you feel that hand tighten, let it go. And don't force it further than that. You'll probably just break the little plastic sprues inside. All right, there we go. So check that your buttons work. I think that's working. I can feel it clicking. I can kind of see it in there. It's not really a clicky mouse, but that one's nice and clicky. It's quite nice, actually. I like this one. The next step is we need to put our little friction pads on the bottom. So you should have this in the kit as well. And they just have a little adhesive backing so we can peel that off and just put that in place like such. You know, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So let's just force, fast forward through this process. Okay, so there's our four pads, one, two, three, four. It's quite nice actually. Uh, a little big for my hand. It feels a little further back, I'd like that. But it does feel super light and quite nice in the palm. I always like the mouse with like the little thumb uh, rest. You can stow away the USB, which is nice. You have a little slot in there. So what you can do is you can open this up and just drop your USB in. So in case you're traveling or whatever, that way you can see the little tab there. So it's not gonna fall out. But apart from that, let's put in our battery and we should see a little laser or something. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Oh yeah, there we go. It's on, it's working. And let me just test this switch. Yeah, so that's definitely the off switch there. So make sure you check your kit because it is a tiny little part that goes in there. So the next thing you'll do is you'd simply go connect this to the computer and use it. So apparently, according to the instructions, what you wanna do is first plug in the USB to your computer. And then to pair this to the computer is you want to hold down the two mouse buttons and the middle mouse button as well. So all three might be easier if I do it like this. And then you would turn it on while still holding those buttons and you just wait and keep holding it. And then you should see the mouse pair. And then once it pairs, you can probably test it out, turn it off and then turn it back on again and it should automatically pair to your computer. So there you have it, the Bamboo Lab mouse kit. As you can see here, this is actually the generic mouse design that is linked to the model. But then you get other ones like this, the Ergo Snake or whatever I think it is, link in the description to whoever created this, thanks to them for their design. But uh, there's a whole bunch of crazy ones out there or really decent mouse shells that you can use this kit for. And it's a great cheap wireless mouse that actually is quite easy to assemble and very cheap. And sometimes you even get it for free in your kits, in your Bamboo Lab purchases. So, so if you're wondering how to assemble your mouse kit, this is one example of how to do that. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have found value, then please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and thanks for watching.